Hello everyone and welcome to another Creative Design Team YouTube collaboration where this month we are celebrating Chelsea Vorismati's 10k subscribers on YouTube. So over the next few days we are all scrap lifting one of Chelsea's pages that she has done on YouTube. You'll find a link to her process video in the description below and you may have already seen Erin's amazing page that went up yesterday where she scrap lifted one of Chelsea's pages and I'll have a link below to the Creative Design Team playlist for 20 2024. So you'll be able to come back and check on what everybody else is doing and how we're scrap lifting and celebrating Chelsea's wonderful achievement. So I've got some photos here in front of me. I am continuing on with this Phillip Island holiday. I really want to get these pages finished. So I decided I was going to adapt one of Chelsea's designs here to a double page spread. I think this one is a single page, but I wanted to extend this over to a double page spread. And I love the effect that she's got with these colors. I'm going to be using colors more suited to my photos here. I've picked out Journey, Lagoon and Glacier. Chelsea has done a wonderful process video on how she has achieved this result. She's used two colors here. I'm going to attempt to use three because I want to continue this graduation of color with these papers. So I've picked Journey which is a little bit brighter than this pattern but I'm going to water this down a little bit to hopefully tone in with these papers. I've got Lagoon and I've got Glacier. There's an exception to my rule of just just using one collection within this album. I can't actually remember what this one was from. I have already trimmed this down to an 11 inch height when I was planning this album. So I'll see if I can find what paper collection this is from and put that below, but I'm not quite sure I'll be able to work out what one it is. If someone knows, please let me know in the comments. But I love this graduation of color and that's what I'm going to try and emulate on my page. So what I'm thinking of doing is making one side of this layout all of this paper and covering it with this entire paper pattern. So I'm gonna cut this down to eight and a half in width. It's already 11 inches in height. And I am going to adhere this to some white daisy because I'm going to do some of this ink smooshing on top of this pattern paper. And printed paper, it is fairly sturdy, but I want to give it additional strength with the white daisy. And then I'm gonna adhere the remainder onto the right page. I've got these pieces adhered together and now I'm going to do the ink smooshing treatment on here like Chelsea did. So the first color I'm gonna use is Journey. So I'm just gonna smoosh this down and then spritz it with quite a bit of water. And I'm going to go around this section here with it and go direct in. And it is quite bright. I can see that already that that is going to be too bright. So I am just gonna wipe this off and do just a little bit onto this side as well. And you can see it's behaving differently on the pattern piece of paper here. I'm not gonna use much of this journey at all. So I'm just gonna sponge that up with my paper towel and you can see how bright it is here. But I'm hoping when I go in with the Lagoon ink, that's going to tone this down just a little bit. Probably should have done the test run first, but I've decided I will leave this in the video and not pull all of this up. I'm gonna see if I can fix it. So now I'm gonna go in with Lagoon ink. Spritz that up. And I'm going to go over top of here first. If this doesn't tone down too much, I may just lift this up and just put another piece of white behind here. But we'll just see how we go. And I actually quite like how that looks. Now, while this one dries a little bit, I'm gonna go in and do the same on this side. And I need to get some more ink on the page. Now I'm just using White Daisy and regular paper. So there will be drying time involved. And I'll probably bring in my heat gun to help dry things off just a little bit. But I want a little bit more of this ink going into the paper. And I'm sort of liking how this is layering up. I'm getting some speckles here as well, which you can get when you just tap when it starts to bead. And I'm just going to keep adding more ink and more water until I get the look that I want before I go in with the glacier. 
So this is something you have to bear in mind when you're doing this on a pattern paper. You are going to get a different color result across the page from what you think you might get with these color tones. These are a more greeny blue and I thought the Lagoon would come out in that color, but I could try mixing some colors if it bothered me too much. But I am going to do some ink blending over top. The other way to control this sort of thing is to pick it up with a plastic bag. So you put your hand inside a plastic bag and then you bring that up. And I showed that not long ago on my YouTube channel. So I will link to that video and it was a layout for this album. So you can see I'm just picking up some of those speckles. Now bearing in mind that I do have photos that will be going over part of this. And now I'm going to bring in some Glacier ink and this is going to be quite light compared to the two colours that I was using before. So now I'm going to go up around this area here. I'm putting this into my paper. And I'm loving the texture that I'm getting with this. But I don't want to oversaturate my paper too much because it is not a watercolor cardstock. So I'm gonna dry these off with my heat gun so that I can apply a few more little textured elements with the ink smooshing. Now I will mention that I was pretty generous with my adhesive when I was adhering this down. I went all the way around the outside as well as some strips across here. It was a little bit of a gamble to do this onto a pattern piece of paper that was adhered to some white daisy. But if I'd have just done this straight onto the pattern paper, it probably wouldn't have been sturdy enough to stand up to all the water that's been added with this. So that's something to consider. And I will be putting this underneath something heavy once I finish doing my page, or I can just bend it like this and that helps it become a little bit flatter. So what I'm going to do now is come in with some ink blending and Chelsea did this on her video and this really finished the page off beautifully. I'm just going to put down a grip mat here. This is a Tim Holtz grip mat so I can put my ink up the top. You might not get all of that on camera but this is Lagoon ink and I'm just coming in and putting some on my blending brush and then I'm coming off the edge of the page and coming into the page a little bit and you can see how that is deepening up the color but I've still got all the light and the shade and the splatter type effect from my inking. Now I'm not doing up the middle section of either of these pages because it's flowing across as a two page spread so I wanted to keep this area clear of this effect and it just gives it a little bit more continuity with the pattern extending across the middle here. But I think this is helping bring everything together and it does brighten that up a little bit. And then I'm going to use Glacier ink. I'm going to put the brush that I'm using for Lagoon in the lid of that ink pad so I don't get confused. And I am going to wipe off my all-purpose mat a little bit because I've got Lagoon ink on there and I don't want the Glacier to be contaminated with that. So I'm doing exactly the same thing here, bringing the ink in just a little bit. And I love the effect that Chelsea got with the colors that she used with the paprika. And I think it was Sundance she used and it just looked beautiful. So I thought I would try and make hers as an autumn theme. So I thought I would give this a go with a summer style page. And then I'm just going to do exactly the same thing onto this side with Glacier ink coming in off the edge here and then bringing in Lagoon around this section. Now I've brought in my splatter box here because I want to add some white splatters to this. And I've got this Winsor & Newton white ink here. I just need to give it a bit of a shake. It's a while since I've used it. So I'm just mixing that up and I'm just going to dip my paintbrush directly into this and splatter it onto my page here. And I'm remembering to do this before I actually put my photos on. So just some white splatters just to add a little bit more texture to this. And I'm loving how this is looking. And I think this is creating a really gorgeous effect for the photos that I have. So I've got to set this aside to dry and then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. If you have the Dina Wakely white gloss spray, you can do exactly the same thing. You can take the spray nozzle off and you can dip a paintbrush in. And I just got this from Officeworks in Australia. So it's a calligraphy ink. So anywhere that sells office supplies that has quite a good range of calligraphy type supplies should have this type of ink. 
Now, the good thing about scrap lifting one of Chelsea's videos on YouTube is that I could go back and watch it and see what she's doing step by step. She didn't actually do the white splatters that I've done, but she brought in this stamp set called Background Elements and added a few more elements to it because she wasn't quite happy with the amount of splatters that she had on here. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to start with Glacier Ink. And I'm just going to add a few of these over where the glacier ink is and I'm hoping you'll be able to pick this up on camera but it is creating even more texture to this background with some more controlled splatters here. So I'm going to do glacier ink on all the glacier areas and then I'll be doing lagoon ink on the lagoon areas. So what I'm sort of doing while I'm creating my layout is having Chelsea's video playing, pausing Chelsea's video, going back and looking at what she has done and then coming in and continuing on with this. So it's like having her sitting right next to me creating the layout that she's doing and I'm just following along with what she's doing. So it really is fun to do this collab where we can scrap lift each other. So I'm just going to keep doing this around these sections here where the lagoon ink is and you can see that's bringing much more texture to my page. So there's my background pages all done. Chelsea did go around and do some ink blending on the edge with her sponge tool just to add a bit more depth and taking with it with some brown ink. But I'm just leaving mine as it is because I think I've got enough definition around here and I don't want to make this too heavy. So what I'm going to do now is bring in my photos and I'm loving how they look on this background. And I'm just going to bring Chelsea's page in here. So you can see that she has three photos and she's overlapped them and nestled them in together and created a little spot here for her title. Now I'm doing a double page spread and I just have two photos for each page. So my peer photo I'm putting together and this area here is a little bit of dead space but I didn't want to trim this down too much and lose this whole sense of perspective here. So what I'm going to do is emulate what Chelsea has done here and just overlap my photos a little bit. But I'm going to keep my peer photos together, that one here, and for the bridge photo I am going to overlap that there. Now I don't have a lot of embellishments to put onto this page so I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with that as yet but something will come to me as I'm adhering things down. I may just leave this with the photos and a little title and a little bit of journaling. So I was just spending some time hanging around walking and enjoying the sunshine while the girls I was traveling with were all off shopping. I decided that I wanted to enjoy some fresh air and sunshine and just take some photos. I love the Phillip Island Bridge and I don't think I've ever walked underneath it before to get that photo. It was a perfect day just for walking around and enjoying everything. What I'm thinking of doing is some stamping directly on this page. I'm going to go through my stamp sets and see what I can find but I'm going to adhere these down and then I'll be back to do the title and a little bit of journaling. I've got my photos adhered and now I'm going to stamp my title and I'm thinking of just putting Phillip Island Bridge. Do my journaling in this section here where it's a little bit lighter I think rather than trying to put my journaling over this dark area. I'm not too sure how my stamping is going to show on this piece here so I'm just going to cheat a little bit and just get one of these letters. I'm using Prairie Alphabet and it's quite fine. I'm just going to stamp an E underneath this photo here so I can see if I like the look of it. I'm going to use Espresso ink and peel my photo back a bit. I know you're probably not able to see it too much. And I've done some very rough stamping here, but I think I'll be able to see that quite well on my layout. Now you saw how much adhesive I had onto my photos then. I've basically gone all the way around and down the middle with my photos because this has had so much treatment to it. And what I'm loving about doing this layout is the fact that it's almost like an art journal page. And I haven't done an art journal page in quite some time. I do have a couple of art journal pages up on my YouTube channel. So if you'd like to check out what I've done, I'll put a link to those, but it's so much fun doing all the ink smooshing and applying different mediums with the controlled splatter, the splattering of the white ink. Now I'm just stopping talking while I concentrate while I stamp this. So I'm going to do bridge down here and then I'll have Phillip Island coming across this way. So I'm starting here to work with bridge and then I'll work backwards. But art journaling is something that I really do enjoy. I don't always film what I'm doing because I feel most people on here like to see scrapbook layouts. 
But there's no reason why you can't take art journaling techniques and translate them to your scrapbooking layouts. I know Chelsea absolutely loves mixed media and that's one of the reasons why I chose to scrap lift this layout of hers. So I'm going to continue on with my title and then I'm going to look at what other stamps I might introduce to this if I'm going to introduce any at all. I finished my title off and I quite like how it's nestled in amongst these photos here. And then I've done a little bit of stamping. It's a little bit hard to see on camera. So this says, this makes me happy and a good day. And this is from an old set called Insta Life that I really haven't used too much, but I know that I'm gonna be bringing this out a little bit more because I love this world map stamp. So I thought they were appropriate just to stamp in this area here. And I've put my journaling down, but what I'm gonna do now is add a little bit more detail to these pages with some espresso ink. I've got embroidered borders. I'm gonna use the stitch and I've brought this one back out again. I only used this the other day because I like this little wave part here. So I'm going to do some stamping on here that it's a little bit reminiscent of doing art journaling type pages and I need to wash this stamp so that it clings on here a little bit better but I thought I might do some stitches just around the edges of these pages. I'm going off the page. I'm not pressing too much with this. This is why I hadn't flipped it over to the spongy side because this is quite a delicate stamp and I don't want to smoosh it out too much. I just want to finish off my borders. I'm not going to go all the way up and along. I'm just layering them. Try not to get my head in the way here. So it finishes off this corner a little bit. So I'm doing multiples of three and I'm going across and down each side. But I like how that brings in a little bit of detail. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this edge of the paper as well. So I've got that framed out. Now I'm going to bring in this little wave piece here and I'm going to do some generational stamping with this because I don't want the solid part of espresso. I just want this to be quite light. I'm going around where my little title part is. I'm putting some close together and then I'm going to overlap some of them as well. So this is just finishing off my pages nicely. This one I might just do a little bit stronger because it's the darker part. And it's also grounding these stitches a little bit. So I'm going to keep doing this. I love doing this sort of stamping. It's a very art journaling type thing to do, just layering up areas and building up a little collage of stamps. And then I'm going to put some underneath my journaling here and then come off to the side a little bit as well. I might put some at the top as well. I don't want to go over my photo. But I love how this is adding just a little bit more to the page. I'm going to do some where this Phillip Island Bridge title is, remembering to stamp off. Well, I think I might have already stamped off on that one, so I'm just going to go over that again. And where the darker part of the paper is, I'm just going to go in with first generation so that you can actually see these wave elements that I'm putting on here. So there's my two page spread. I'll just hold this up so you can see. It's very subtle down in this dark area. That's where I had a lot of journey build up on top of the dark part of this pattern paper. I've got it layered over the top of the stitching here. A little bit of the waves happening underneath my Phillip Island Bridge title. Also around my journaling to bring everything together and underneath where I've got some little subtext happening here and in these corners as well. And Chelsea's original page was part of a collab that we did at, with the creative design team and it was all about shakers so she made her elements into shakers behind this strip here so I recommend you go and have a look at how she constructed that because it really added so much to her page in the same video she also did some cards as well so make sure you go and check out Chelsea's video with this and I hope I've done her justice with the ink smooshing that I did the controlled splatters with the stamp I did bring in some additional splatters with my white ink but I do love how this has turned out so this is another one ready to to go back into the book and I think I've only got three more pages to do to finish off this project so I'm looking forward to doing those. As I said earlier make sure you click on the link below for the CDT playlist and stay tuned in the next few days for more of a scrap lifting Chelsea's designs. Thank you so much for tuning in as always happy crafting and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.